that should do it. Good evening. My name is Dr. Casper Darling. I'm the head researcher at the Federal Bureau of Control. I'm broadcasting this message in the hopes that it reaches somebody in my home universe. This looks like the Bureau of Control, or I've worked many, many years and in truth, if I choose not to think about it, there are days that go by where I don't even notice the differences between the universe I'm now trapped in and the universe is my home. And yet, although the, uh, the differences are, in fact, minor, that's not to say that they're not significant. I used to uh, get very animated about the idea of parallel universes. They're one of the most interesting areas of study in my field, but it's one thing when uh, we're talking about a theoretical construct, it's, it's quite another when you're, you're stuck in one, they cross the threshold from theory to at least my own perception of reality, which is all any of us have, of course. So, for the time being and for quite some time now, I'm stuck here. That's not the reason for me making this broadcast. I am... Um, I'm sure I'll be able to figure out a way to get home eventually. Mm. And if I don't, it won't be for lack of trying. I can guarantee you that. Um, the reason I'm making this broadcast is... While I've been here... In, my, in the course of figuring out how to come back, I've uh, made quite a few discoveries of, well, let's call them, uh, I think they're still in the category of altered items. I don't believe I've discovered any new objects of power, but, uh, that line can be a little fuzzy and a little, a little bit arbitrary, if I'm being perfectly honest. Anyway, in the course of my studies, I've, I've run across several of these objects of interest. And from what I know about my reality and your reality, if the objects exist here, the objects probably exist where you are as well. So, this video is not a message in a bottle. 
It's not a yearning to be rescued. I, I want to give you all the information about the existence of these altered items in case any of you run into them to be forewarned is to be forearmed. Like I said, it's possible that these items might not exist in your reality. They, they may most likely exist, but with little tweaks, slight differences. So small, you may not even notice. Anyway. It's important that whoever is receiving, receiving this message knows about these things. So let's get right into it. The first one I've been calling Cassandra's Camera Unobscura. Um, I've classified it as AI-144-KE. Um, for all I know, you may be way past that number in your reality by now. Um, but as I don't think I exist in your reality, I very much doubt, uh, even with the presence of your new director, who is quite able, I, I still have a feeling that perhaps my absence is, is felt uh, and perhaps I guess part of me would like to believe that that me not being there meant something and that therefore in your reality you might not have discovered as many AIs or objects of power, but of course I could be wrong. So the camera on Obscura, I have it around here somewhere. This is it. Looks like a, uh, a vintage 35 millimeter film camera, fixed lens. And uh, the protocol around its containment is, well, for this is, it's not really a protocol around containment because if you don't actively use it, it it's, doesn't do anything. You have to take pictures and develop the film. But if you do take pictures with this camera and develop the film, has a most interesting effect in that it tells you the number of days you have left until you die. That's so very Cassandra. Don't worry, at this point I'm just it's a camera taking pictures of a of another camera. <laughs> I won't develop this film in any case. Anyway, as you can imagine, seeing the future isn't always what it's cracked up to be. It sounds good. This is not predestiny. Your Fate is not fixed. Your number can change. And what that ends up meaning is if you find this object, you're most likely going to start obsessively taking pictures of yourself and others and try to change your number. Which, of course, you can do both ways. And 
usually what ends up happening is in your obsessive quest to prolong your own life, you end up, well, you end up in reality shortening your life and also the time that you do have is spent, is misspent, spent. Any time that you spend directly devoted to lengthening your life is a wash. If you don't get some sort of exponential, at least significantly incremental benefit, return on the time that you sink into prolonging your life, then you might as well not have done it to begin with. It's not really living, is it? So, it's not really a, a selfie camera. It's more of a camera you would inflict upon somebody. But, you know, for some people, that's their thing. Find a mirror, you know, go for the, the duck face or whatever the new one is. Some decent lighting, a little, little ring light going. Develop that film and roll the dice. That's your thing. Maybe you'll be happy with your number, but almost nobody is. The background on this object is uh, it was found in a bed and breakfast near the Appalachian Trail in West Virginia by a couple who within a few days had committed redacted. It is unclear if the altered object was the cause of this tragedy, but come on. It'd be an astounding coincidence, wouldn't it? Coincidences do happen. So that's the first object. I wish I could say things get better from here. The next object I want to show you. Oh. This is a, a doozy, I call it. Schrodinger's stethoscope, and it's a uh, AI ninety four KE. Put you down. Oh, yes. There we have the lab coat. Sort of goes with it. What you think? Containment procedure for this object is uh, rather complicated, actually, because it self-replicates. The process is arrested by keeping it inside a lightless box. Well, I've kept this room dark enough that it shouldn't activate, but see, the problem is we have no way of knowing how many had already replicated by the time we found the object. So we just don't know how many of these there are in existence. And its uh, effect is insidious. It makes any heart issues disappear whenever the heart is listened to or measured. That's the uh, Schrodinger part. Collapsing waveforms, not unlike the waveform of an EKG readout. So, elevated T waves, QT prolongation. 
Right. Bundle branch block. Wolf Parkinson White. Non-sustained ventricular tachycardia. All kinds of things. You gotta use one of these to hear them. But ironically, they, they mask the symptoms. You know, it just goes to show the horror that lives inside our own bodies. We're all ticking time bombs and we spend so much time desperately wishing that we could be afraid of things outside our bodies. We want to transfer the fear we have of ourselves onto some other because once we've done that, we can eliminate the other, or at least have respite from the other. Perhaps, you know, when you're home safe in your bed, that whatever other you transfer this onto can't get you. Maybe you're only worried when you go to school because of the bully, or you're worried about your parents, or you're worried about your kids. There are times when you can escape those worries. Nobody can escape the, uh, the worry that we carry with us wherever we go. It can strike at any time, regardless how safe we think we are. Take solace where you can. Be very careful. You go to your doctor. She breaks out a stethoscope. You just don't know. Anyway. Maybe we got it in time. Maybe there are no others. Makes me think of that phrase, attributed, misattributed most likely to Winston Churchill. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. I would tweak that just a bit and say, you have nothing to fear but yourself. All right. Background. The item was discovered by redacted at Walter Reed Medical Center in Redacted. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> that makes me laugh. Why would, why would you redact the location of Walter Reed Medical Center? Everybody knows where Walter Reed Medical Center is. Unless there was a, another shadow Walter Reed Medical Center. Probably best not to think about that too much, and definitely best not to talk about it, if you know what I mean. All right, let's move on. Oh, this one's a doozy. A doozy. Somewhere here. Oh Lord. Please don't tell me I've misplaced it. That can't be possible. I'm starting to sit on the lower shelves. Oh. Starting to worry there for a moment. Don't you don't want to lose this? That's for sure. It is well. I call it the 
the Performance Anxiety Service Weapon in its AI-128KE. Mm, sure, you're familiar if you're at the Home Bureau, but even if you're not, with what a service weapon is. The containment procedure for this service weapon is that Okay, containment procedure for this altered item would require redacted legislation unlikely to occur in the United States. However, its effects can be mitigated by AI-89PE, which we'll get to in a moment. So, what is this? It's, well, simple, really. It's a, it's a service weapon that's... Um, won't function in stressful situations, which, what good is that? Maybe be useful for, for target practice? Here's the ironic thing about this item. It does not perform if its user is under stress. Psychopaths don't feel the compunction when using service weapons and therefore don't feel the stress, so, you know, they don't, <laughs> they don't have a conventional psyche, so for them, it works just fine, it's like power, those who crave it by definition are the least equipped to have it, and those who don't want it typically uh, don't get it. Uh, a lot of people look at evolution and are amazed, and, and I am too, but humanity also got a lot wrong. Maybe someday the universe will do intelligent life right. If so, it's not, not going to be on Earth, in your reality or mine. Background. Redacted for nearly 10 years before the development of AI-89PE, which we're moving on to next. All right, this is interesting. This is AI-89PE, right in here. I call it the uh, unreasonable expectation of foresight pill. The containment procedure for this is not necessary, but if taken by someone of psychotic disposition, it's essential that redacted the important part. Ridiculous. The important part got redacted. It's like in a movie when the protagonist is on the phone and they say, whatever you do, the most important thing is don't, and then static. Personally, I think that trope can go to hell. But uh, trope or no trope, here we have life imitating art, which is annoying. So what is this? Little blue pills. There aren't many of them.
And what do they do? You'll like this. Pill allows consumer to use the performance anxiety service weapon without issue. However, pills must be taken 12 hours prior to use. How are you supposed to know? 12, I mean, you can't take them every day. There's not that many of them. We don't know what the side effects are for chronic long-term use on these. I mean, unless you're planning a heist, in which case you really shouldn't have access in the first place. Or maybe clairvoyance. Of course, the problem with that is anyone who thinks they're clairvoyant is far more likely to actually just be deranged. So an unsound mind leading to delusions of clairvoyancy, that's relatively common. Actual, real clairvoyancy. You know, if you have an object of power, maybe. So, and do the math yourself. Eat the worm. Admit your biases. And realize it's impossible to know how much you don't know. There's a weird little rub about the pursuit of knowledge in, in general. Check this out. There's a nearly infinite amount of knowledge in the universe, right? At least certainly relative to the capacity of our brains the amount of knowledge in the universe is infinite. So, consider this weird paradox. The more you learn, the more you know. And the more you know, the more you think you know. You with me so far? But if the difference between the amount that we can possibly know and all knowledge in the universe is completely statistically insignificant, then someone who knows nothing and is aware that they know nothing is actually much more in touch with reality than someone who knows a lot by uh, human standards, because relative to the universe, they still know nothing, but they might be tricked into thinking they know something. So really, from an epistemological perspective, the more you know, the less in touch you are with reality. that state of mind is more delusional than just accepting that it's impossible to really know anything. And that thought experiment has on more than one occasion been enough to make me question my life's pursuit. But it's too far gone now, I think. Anyway, background for the unreasonable Expectation of foresight pill. This medication was manufactured with the mandated assistance of several redacted nearly 10 years after the discovery of A128 KE, which was, of course, the service weapon. So, service weapon discovered a decade later. Unreasonable expectation of foresight pill discovered. We learned a lot in the process. I wouldn't say that was a wasted decade. Failure is important. 
almost as important as success. That's what I tell myself. Oh, this font. A beaut. Look at this. How long has this been around? And it works, believe it or not. Insofar as an optical mi microscope with uh, optics of this caliber can work, I guess. Iris functions quite well, actually. Look at that. It's nothing like a, a functioning iris. Anyway, this thing must weigh 10 pounds. I have an oil microscope that can give you 10 times the magnification of that and weighs a fifth. Anyway, what is it? I call it the, uh, probably a smudge microscope, AI213KE. The containment procedure for it is uh, just keeping it out of any formal laboratory setting. The altered effect. Check this out. This microscope has the ability to selectively reveal or conceal elements within its view based on the subjectively perceived competence of the user by their contemporary. The less competent the user is perceived to be, the more will be revealed. Take note of the discrepancy between objective competence and subjective competence. For further illustration, see incident redacted, of course. I don't know how altered items come into being. I don't know if there's a direction imparted by the board? I don't, I have no idea. But if there was design behind this object, I think it was probably meant to be a good thing. I think maybe the intent was to help level the playing field, but that's not what happened case with almost all of these objects. Otherwise, I wouldn't be bringing them to your attention. There's a selection bias going on there. But what usually happens in a case like this is not a goodwill hunting type of situation where the overlooked underdog makes a grand discovery, in this case, with the help of a altered item. That's not usually what happens. What usually happens is you get someone whose discovery goes unbelieved, just ignored due to their position in the laboratory hierarchy. Trust me, I've existed in labs for a long, long time, and they're very Machiavellian, extremely competitive, cutthroat. I mean, just look at, look up the history of DNA, Watson and Crick, get some idea of what goes on there. So, I mean, the result of that is always, you know, hey, who cares? Science gets set back another decade, takes a, a decade to come up with a pill that is practically useless anyway, but we learned a lot. I stand by saying that we learned a lot. So really, the more I think about it, the more I think that that microscope is evidence of a lack of direction, or at least lack of informed direction in the genesis of these altered items. So uh, yeah, this object was discovered in laboratory redacted, where it played a key role in delaying the development of the unreasonable expectation of foresight pill by nearly a decade, of course. Oh, this is Pazuzu. 
AI 41 UE. Containment procedure keep within the Feynman transparent aluminum cage at all times. Yeah. Hmm. Of course, I'll give you all a look at it. Yeah, I don't really think you needed my. This isn't particularly. Uh, this isn't news to anybody. It's Pazuzu. You've seen The Exorcist, right? Yeah. I mean, what are the effects of the item? It will Pazuzu you. If you don't want to get Pazuzu'd, don't uh, mess with. Pazuzu. I'll tell you what is a really superb, amazing discovery is these Feynman cages. They look just like glass. They're transparent aluminum. And they block almost all altered item effects if you can keep them within one of these. I'm just noticing now the bottom is wood, so this isn't really completely encased in Feynman transparent aluminum. That could be an issue. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna think about that too much right now. It's giving me a, the heebie-jeebies. Anyway, just don't mess with the zoo. I mean, that's, if you needed me to tell you that, I don't know what to tell you. This one was weird. I'm not even going to take it out. It's also in some transparent Feynman transparent aluminum cage. It's the, uh, hot, the hand and the eye of Vecna. Now, so the summer assistant who wrote this up. The mummified eye and hand of the Lich Vecna, Lord of the Rotted Tower. The Undying King, the Arch Lich of Secrets. Effects include redacted. I, mean, I don't know. As far as I can tell, the only curse is that it stinks. And the Feynman cage does not mitigate that. Or does so only a little. I mean, it smells like the stuff you floss under your teeth, in between your teeth, mixed with like singed underarm hair. It's not good. I don't know if they really have a power. And the background is long. I don't even want to read it. It's, this sounds like fantasy Harry Potter crap to me. I don't, I don't live in Dungeons and Dragons land, okay? I live in the scientific laboratory. I deal with tangible, testable realities, not this alarm or gorillas bullcrap. Let's just move on. I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a little talk with that research assistant. These are uh, Nazinsky's Carnivorous Dental Implants, AI-309-PE. Containment procedure. Do not put in mouth. That's it. Kind of like instructions you might give a toddler. It's a full set of human teeth. Uh, these tooth implants are perfect in appearance and functionality, except uh, they crave tongue. Apparently they're sentient and carnivorous. So you could imagine what might happen if you were to 
get these permanently implanted in your mouth. You often hear about people biting their tongue, people who are prone to biting their tongue. You might want to ask if they've had any dental work done. It's getting darker. I'm a fan of this one. I mean, this one sucks, <laughs> but I'm a fan of this. It's right up here. I guess. I hope that's in focus. It's the Scrivening implement of unfortunate coincidence pen. AI 188 UE. Containment procedure. Keep away from ink or any ink like material. This includes blood and redacted. I don't want to think about that one too much. Once supplied with the requisite fuel, this altered object will compel its wielder to write, and that is where it displays its true power. What is that power? Well, let's move on to the description and alter effect. A normal, if flamboyant, inkwell pen. This scrivening implement compels its user to write a story of great interest and intrigue. Well constructed, contemporary to the era in which it is used. A story of great popular promise, seemingly conjured out of the wielder's own imagination. Sounds good, right? Doesn't end there, does it? The problem is this item also utilizes mirror clairvoyance and telepathy, along with alternative chronology manipulation to compel another person to write the exact same story retroactively three months earlier. So imagine that this pen lets you write a story, but as soon as you finish it, identical stories published by another author before you get a chance to even send yours in. I've seen it happen. I've seen them get immediately optioned, fast-tracked into successful movies. If you have the temerity to send your manuscript out or even speak of it to anyone, you're just going to get, oh, well, looks like somebody's been reading or watching X or Y. You'll get flustered, upset, because it was your work. But the truth is, it really wasn't your work. It was the pen the whole time. Anyway, it would drive me bonkers if every time I made a discovery, someone made it a month before. It has happened, but not with enough consistency for me to think that there is a malevolent driving force causing it. But who knows? Background. Three recorded instances of this device have been documented. 1897's Redacted. 1960s redacted, and 2003's A Million Little Pieces. 
guess there was no need to redact that one. All right, little pen. Uh, this one I don't have here with me, but it's the scapegoat goat. And the word GOAT is in all caps. See if you can guess why. Containment procedure. Keep in a pen with other goats. Do not mark the scape goat in any way. If needed, the goat can be identified by DNA sequencing. Marking the scape goat puts it in immediate danger. Scapegoat replicates via parthenogenesis, can thrive in virtually any climate and subsist on a wide variety of materials. However, their prime source of sustenance is blame. There are likely scapegoats living on every major continent. Description altered effect. This is the ubiquitous other we need in order to set ourselves up in opposition to something. Gives us all the ability to blame our shortcomings and inabilities to act on a being made manifest. A goat. The goat goat. Well, what's interesting to me about this is that the next part here, right? The sentient being is an essential symbiote for all forms of intelligent life. All forms. It's essentially willed into existence by a gestalt insecurities. It's unknown whether or not the scapegoat somehow promotes the assignation of blame, but it subsists on it, so it stands to reason that it might. The causality dilemma is unlikely to be resolved one way or the other. It's really a chicken the egg problem. Does the scapegoat need blame to exist? Is it possible from their perspective we only exist to provide them with the blame they need to survive? They may very well see us as, as their captives, their willing captives. We're so good at blaming others, aren't we? Mm. They seem to need the blame as much as we need to assign it, and they're shifty. I've been around them. I don't trust them. I don't. Here's the thing, I don't trust them, and I have no compunction about blaming them for not trusting them. But then I think, why do I have no compunction? Why do I go so quickly to blaming them for not trusting them? And then I realize I'm caught in their trap, right? They're manipulating me. If that is in fact what they do, yeah. they're manipulating me to blame them. So they get a, a nice meal. <sighs> the way the scapegoats make out like martyrs. Background, the scapegoat was begotten, not made. A couple more I'd love to show you. It's getting a little dark here in the lab. So I'll turn on the lights if that's okay with you.